Hello, my convicts and comic catchers, this is Isaac of Convict, bringing you guys and gals another video. So I kind of wanted to do this video because I was actually pleasantly surprised. If you didn't know, I actually got a router or modem router, it's a modem and a router that I am using now instead of my Zeke's old, which was my old router, which actually was, uh, where, where did I put it? I can't remember where I put it. I put it somewhere. Um, but yeah, I uh, had my old Zeke's old. I didn't know. Where did I put it? I can't remember where I put it. Either that or Rio's took it. I don't know. But uh, basically, I had an old router, um, for, which was a Zeke's old one. And that's what I've been using for my connection. That's what I got from the company I'm with. The company I get my internet through at the moment is called Be Online. Another company I'm going through, they actually seem to be like a company that I, I'm guessing they rent connections from other companies because they, they do Talk Talk as well as BT. And I swapped over from Talk Talk to BT while being under them and obviously having their router instead. So, uh, yeah, I don't know where it is. Uh, but yeah, so we've got a new modem router. I'll just go get it. Two seconds. Go get the box. And uh, this is the uh, obviously box here of the router. You see on here. And this is what I got. Just show it up a bit more to the camera so you can see it there. And there you go. So we've got a new router, uh, which is actually just down here to my side. And I'll show you the RGB. I said I was going to show the IG RGB on it before. But pick it up here. You can actually see it's got RGB on it. This is what the router looks like. You can see here. This is the only router that's plugged in. You can see uh, the back here where it's connected. It's got the DSL connected in. It's got obviously the Ethernet connected in, the ones that I bought. And obviously the power supply on there. Put that back down. Carefully put that down again so uh, it doesn't thingy, doesn't get broken. So, yeah, so that is the new router which is called the DSL AXA82U. I'll put in the description what it's called and where you can get it from on Amazon. But anyone who might be interested in looking at it at least, uh, just also to note this is not a affiliation, it's not a sponsored video or anything like that. This is all my own opinion to what I thought of the router. And so on and so forth. So I've only had the router for a couple of days, if a day or so. So at the moment, obviously, it, well, this would be like the second. This would be coming up to what the second day I've had it. I think because I, I opened it. Did I not open it yesterday? I'm sure, I did that yesterday. So I've been playing about with it. It was either yesterday or the day before. Anyway, it's been only like a day or so. I've had the router. So I've been playing with it a little bit and playing some games and I've actually had some surprising results from it. I actually really wanted to talk about it again because I was quite surprised how good the route actually was uh, or for what it was. So without further ado, I thought we would go into a bit more depth in the router and show you around the router a little bit. I won't be able to show you everything because obviously some have things in there I don't want you to see. So I might have to pull the... Um, the web page on and off the screen to sort of just double check there's nothing on there that's incriminating enough that you'll know my uh, details or some things I don't need to see. So, yeah, here we go. So, let's just have a look. The first bit, nothing really there is the no. Okay. I know there's like certain areas I can be okay with uh, and we can get away with. So, this is the beginning screen as you can see here. Signing into the router was pretty difficult or getting it to start up at the beginning. If, uh, just make you aware, if you're not te technically minded, you may need a little bit of assistance to get this to work because you do need to have uh, a lot of details to get it to run, to get it to work. Some of it will automatically pick up by the router itself, but there was certain things with the QO2 uh, and then there was something else I had to put to 0 and 101 in, in order to get it to work for the VLAN or something to do with the VLAN. So yeah, just be aware that if you do get a router, 
it does need a little bit of technical know-how. Just make sure that you take photographs of the screens on your modem router on your previous one and just make sure you copy everything because obviously when you're on like a connection like me which is an FTTC connection you will need to have PPPoE which means protocol over ethernet so you will have to have a email and a password that allows you to access the actual physical internet and then obviously if you've got ADSL or DSL you'll need to put the tab under ASL, DSL or whatever it is under uh, so you, you will need to take a few details down before uh, you obviously continue on. But there is a quick setup, internet setup you can do here. I'm not going to click it because no point. Uh, but you click on there and it'll just run you through a few things. It'll ask you about your provider. It'll ask you to put in your PPPoE username and password to sign in with. And then obviously it'll get you on. It also looks like it can actually do two different separate internet connections as well. So I'm connected here with WPA2 Personal. You can actually go up in level on, on here to um, enterprise level and stuff. So you can increase this. It is Wi-Fi 6, this router as well. It's because here we've got two Wi-Fi. Uh, I've separated mine. I wanted them to be separate. You can also access the aura of the uh, RGB here and change the color to static breathing wave and stuff. So that color you saw at the front, you can actually physically change that. Um, so let me just drag it off two seconds because I can't remember what this one does. Um, hold on, go back to normal size. Thank you. AI, AI tech, does that do anything? Yeah, that shows stuff I can't really show. Guest network doesn't really show anything, but I don't think that really makes much, much looking at, to be honest. So you, you can go in and put two. 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz and you can put them on the stuff and you can see here you can use Alexa. Uh, this one, this is really, really cool. This is something I thought was really, really good is you can do AI protection and it actually does a lot of uh, things you can go through. You can even go through a router security assessment and it can scan for vulnerabilities and it can give you options to enhance your device's protection so you can actually scan now i've got a risk of one now mine because i'm using port forwarding is put it under risk but i've i've turned off up U, universal plug and play i don't use universal plug and play myself because there is ways that hackers can try and uh send something that will go through as a U universal plug and play to try and steal your information so just be aware if you've got upnp on your on your on your router or modem um so yeah i've got you i've got uh port forwarding on and it seems to come up and says that the risk is to do with the port forwarding if you scan you see it says port forwarding disabled uh and it says no so I don't want port forwarding disabled. I want port forwarding on. So for some reason said it's, you know, one of the assessments has gone there. But I was like, well, I want that on. Uh, because see everything else that's been disabled, like um, WPS, UNPMP, the universal plug and play, web access for WAN, uh, ping for WAN, DMZ, port trigger, stuff like that. All these things are disabled. And you can actually go through the assessment and obviously fix your protection. There's also malicious sites blocking, so you can restrict access known to uh, malicious websites to protect you from uh, malware, phishing and spyware, hacking and stuff. Two-way IPS, the two-way IPS, which is a two-way intrusion prevention system, protects any device connected to the network from spam or DDoS attacks. Also blocks malicious incoming packets to your router uh, from network vulnerability attacks such as shell shocks, heart bleed, Bitcoin mining, and ransomware. Additionally, two-way IP IPS detects suspicious outgoing packets from infected devices and avoids botnet attacks as well. Uh, there's infected device prevention and blocking. This feature prevents infected devices from being enslaved by botnets or zombie attacks, which might steal your personal information or attack other devices as well. It tells you if it's actually done any of this as well. So you've got all these, you can have like an alert that will send out to you as well. So if anything goes off, it will go, hang on, 
and then it'll instantly send you like an email and you can see like the other, other bits up there that you can click on as well. Uh, we've got parental controls, not really too much to go into that one. Um, adaptive, does that show anything? Let me just have a quick look. No. Okay, this one's pretty safe. So this one is really cool. You can actually do an app analysis of your desktop. You can see this is my desktop here, and that's my mobile phone. You can actually go in here, and you can actually see what the download and upload speeds are being used, so you can monitor them, and you can change it to kilobits, megabits, auto, whatever you want to put it as. Uh, you've got quality of service here. This is a really cool thing, obviously, for anyone who wanting to stop people from eating all the bandwidth for if you're having issues or you're lagging and stuff in games so enable qos now because i'm on a very low internet connection of 35 or just over five upload as well around 35 38 download and five upload or just over five upload obviously i want to be able to make sure that when rio's using his phone on youtube or anything i'm blocking uh too much so he can't do like heavy 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 sort of like uh, streaming of videos and stuff. Uh, and obviously if I'm playing games to prioritize that as well, you can do that by clicking on these down here. At the moment, I've only used adaptive QoS. It says here, as you can see here, that ensures inbound and outbound bandwidth on both wired and wireless connections for prioritized applications and hacks, tasks via predefined drag and drop presets, gaming, media, streaming, VoIP, web surfing, and file transferring, which you can either do from clicking these, or you can actually click customize. If you do customize, you can actually move them up and down in priority and put them where you want. So I'll put gaming at the top, video and streaming about mid. Obviously, when I'm doing streaming, once I get the new connection, that'll be number two or number one. And then obviously web surfing being the lowest and stuff, uh, just to kind of try and make sure that not too much is using the connection. Then you can just click save. I'm not going to do that because I've already done that before. We've got a spectrum here, which is really cool. It actually shows you graphs of the signal noise and tells you what your download and upload is. And you've got the transmission and reception as well. So it actually shows you in real time. I don't really know what this is showing too much. I'm not that uh, uh, bothered about these kind of things. But it's cool that it's there. And then you've got internet speed here. It actually runs through Ookla. So if you've used Ookla in, before, uh, in the past from speedtest.net, you can come here and you can actually test out your connection. As you can see, we've done a test to somewhere in Telford. It's given me 34 and 43 for downloading, just over 5 upload, and it tells you what your jitter is and what your ping is as well. It even tells you what the level is, and then you can click on it, and it'll tell you what the level is capable or good for. As you can see, mine's apparently good for web browsing uh, and having a, a smooth web browsing experience, which is not good, is it? Because I want it more for gaming. So I actually need to be um, more like I'm up here for super. Your internet is super fast. You can stream many 4K play games simultaneously on multiple devices. I don't think it needs to be that extreme, but I think it would be more like great or maybe fast or ultra is what everyone would probably want so you can do anything in at incredible speeds unfortunately i don't i don't get that but uh there we go so you can actually test it and then run the test and they'll tell you and they'll keep the history of it as well so you can keep the history of this run the test again and see what you're doing so you could probably even do this at certain times of the day and find out what your connection is like at certain times of the day and then obviously keep a track on that. And then, you know, obviously if you need to change anything or maybe even throttle your connection and have it below the lowest point. So it's always going to be at the best point it can be sort of thing. Anyway, so let's move this back over two seconds. Traffic analyzer, does this show anything? No, this doesn't show anything that I need to be worried about. So traffic analyzer, you can see what traffic comes in. Daily top clients. 
uh, apps and devices. You can change, obviously, to upload, download, or both. You can do daily, weekly, monthly. Change that to whatever you want again. All clients, or you can choose like specific clients. Now, I don't really have anything running on here. I don't have the analyzer on either. You can go to traffic monitor. Well, does that show anything? Um, it doesn't. It doesn't hear. Go away, you. It doesn't hear, but you can see reception incoming, coming, in, incoming internet packets, and then you've got outgoing. So you've got reception and stuff. You can click on these. I'm not going to click on anything just in case it shows anything else, but you get the idea. And you can change this again. I prefer megabits, so I know what megabits per second um, is coming through. So at the moment, you can see here we've got this one uh, that you can click on, and it's 0 0.17 megabit on there. Uh, next one I know is safe, which is game. You can come over here and you can actually add gaming devices. You can do it for mobile as well, so you can scan these QR codes. Uh, you can also do port forwarding as well by clicking here. You can select the game. It asks you what game to select and pick a game and try to search for it. It might have a listing for it. Um, and then you just click on there. And then you've got game device uh, prioritize, uh, prioritizing as well. And you just click on here. Again, I'm not going to show these because it will show, it does show certain things I don't want you to see on there. So I can't really show too much into that. Open that. Again, I can't really go and show this one, but I'll just show you the screen here. You just click add. You add the game, the profile. You click apply, enable port forwarding, and then you can port forward, obviously, the rules, and it'll do it. It you can uh, port forward any rules on there to obviously keep your games open. So you've got open port, obviously, something you want. USB application. This doesn't show anything, but it just shows you, obviously, you can do certain things with USB. It's 3.0, the USB on this. You can share files, set up UPnP, iTunes, FTP, and Network Place, uh, which is in brackets called Samba. Uh, printers, 3G and 4G, so you can set up a phone or a um, wireless USB device for 3G and 4G. Enable time machine functionality. I don't know what that is. I really don't know what that is. And then you've got download manager, which you can download and uh, install. So it'll put an application on your PC where you can do download, ma download master, whatever that is. I've never used it, to be honest. So I don't know what that does. Got AI cloud here. Oh, yeah, this one's all right. AI cloud allows you to have uh, smart access. Uh, so you can keep your connected data whenever and wherever and whenever you have internet. Uh, links your home and online storage service and lets you access data through the AI cloud mobile app on your iOS or Android mobile. A personalized web link in your uh, web browser. Now all your data can go there. Uh, and obviously you can do that. I've not signed in or done anything like that. So... Again, it's probably not going to be something I'm going to use myself. Um, that one I can't show. Uh, LAN I can't show either. LAN. Um, this one's okay to show. So the one that I had problems with. So one of the things you're going to you struggle with when you, you do this because when you sign into your PPPoE, as you can see, I'm on PPPoE. You can edit, uh, you want to add, you want to make sure that you're under DSL, uh, not ASL or WAN, and then you've got VDSL, WAN, PTM, and you can see it's active. Uh, that's what I had to put in there to put VLAN ID 101 and the uh, 802.1Q enable, make sure that's on as well. And I just left that at zero. And that's the two things that stopped the internet from working once I've changed them over. They were fine. So if you get stuck, that might help to look out for the VLAN ID and the 802.1Q 802 and find what they are. We've got Amazon Alexa. Um, again, 
I'm not going to really use Amazon Alexa. I don't have one, so that's kind of pointless. And then you've got IPv6, VPN. VPN you can click on, and it'll give you VPNs you can use. I don't use VPNs, so I won't be using this feature. Um, firewall and all that other stuff, I'm not really going to go and click on because they just give away more information. So, yeah, so there we go. So that's everything I really needed to show you. There. there we go. So I thought I'd show it off because I've actually been having a really good experience with the router itself. It's actually been working very, very well. Uh, first, it was a little bit wonky, but I think it's because it just needed time to gather information or, or set up because when I first did it, my ping was going up and down, up and down. I was like, what the hell is it doing? And I thought maybe it's the adaptive QoS is probably not working properly. But after a little, after not even 10 minutes, it, it picked up and it seemed to just lock on and that was it. Then it was good. It was done. It was fine. After that, I think it was because I did the, uh, the internet speed test. Make sure you do the speed test that's in there that you do from Ookla and do the speed test. And after that, it was fine. It's given me a nice, stable, solid ping. And it's been absolutely fine since I'm not, no issues or anything. And I've not had no issues while Rio has been using phones and stuff. And I've been uh, using phones and whatever. Yeah. So it's actually been doing a good job of keeping everything under control and making sure that my connection is as good as it can be, obviously, on the connection I've got. So I've been pretty impressed by it because it actually works really, really well. I've not used NetDoomy yet at all since while using it. I might not even have to because it's actually performing so well that um, it's working in the way I did. And the adaptive is really cool as well because it's working based on application. Because my biggest issue that I've had with my routers, not generally being that it was a um, download and upload speed problem, which it was part, kind of part hand in hand with it, but mine was more application problem where my application that I wanted just wasn't getting prioritized above other applications like gaming and stuff, which is why I kind of like the Duma because of the flower petal, because you can move it over to gaming and have gaming as like the highest and then obviously whatever underneath. This one's obviously got a simple drag and drop system. Um, probably not as, you know, as good as what NetDuma's probably is, because obviously you can do it by percentage in NetDuma. Here you just kind of drag them into order category, like top being the highest and then go down in category, which is why I put the video and streaming about midway down and obviously web to the lowest, so that if anyone's using anything or browsing, it's something, they seem to be the two things that might offend uh, anything or giving me any issues. So apart from, you know, moving them down, it's not been an issue. Maybe I might have to move that file transfer just in case for mobile phones. So like a lower, and then you've got the other for whatever the other section is as well. But yeah, my first experience of this router has been really, really pleasant. It's been working very, very well. It's been doing what it needs to do. It's been, you know, been a, um, a bit of a blast. I've been enjoying it. I've actually been seeing myself getting more kills in Warzone as well, or doing somewhat better. I wouldn't say... <laughs> A tremendously better. Obviously, when the new, brand new internet comes out at the end of the year and I get the thousand down, a thousand up, then obviously that'll make a huge difference. But at the moment, obviously, for what it's doing, it's actually doing a very good job. And I'm being very, very pleased with the results of the router itself. Like I said, I'll link it down in the description below where it is on Amazon. And then you can go and have a look at it because it actually is very, very good. And I, I do highly recommend it. It is an expensive piece of equipment. It's over 200, 200 pounds. But like I said, I'm paying per monthly and obviously through the help and support of my elites and my subscribers, salute you all, uh, for obviously enduring the advertisements and for my elites that pay the $1.99 that supports the channel each and every month. Gives me opportunity, obviously, to be able to, you know, spend a little bit on some things. Like I said, I'm doing it per month. So I'm only paying, I think it's about £40 per month, uh, which is not a great deal. Having to pay over five months and that will then pay this off. So 
And that's what I tend to do with a lot of equipment, like I've done with the microphone here when I got my GoXLR Mini. I did it the same way through Amazon. Uh, if you want to be able to do that, the way you've got to do it on Amazon, you've actually got to sign up and you've got to have a bank account and you've got to have a credit card signed in onto Amazon. Eventually, after so long with you having them on Amazon, it will actually give you then the option to use Amazon version. There's two types. There's like a Barclays thing that you can do it, but you have like a percentage that you've got to pay back to Amazon. So you have the interest, but then you've got the, uh, not, not to Amazon, so to Barclays. Let's get it right. That's for Barclays. But there's another one where you get Amazon pay and you can actually do it for Amazon and it gives you five monthly installments. You've got no interest or anything. Just paying the payment. They'll tell you when the payment's coming out. Just pay in each month. They'll take it out of your account. And uh, if you miss it, obviously you can go into your Amazon account and pay it. Uh, or you can change the dates if you need to change the date at home. And it's very simple and easy. And there's no interest or anything. Just pay per month, whatever it is, like I'm doing for the mouse. This mouse, I kid you not, it's only costing me £8 a month. It's about, it's, a, it's an expensive mouse. I'm only paying £8 a month or something of that nature over five months or whatever it is. I can't remember the exact payment. That's just a rough guide. It's about 8 9 £10, pounds, something like a month. And I got the new uh, Rocat mouse. Uh, and it's been really, really cool. I've enjoyed using it. And everything's really cool. It all works as it, it's intended. So uh, that's how I do it. That's what I've been doing. That's the way Kappa has been sort of kind of keeping things rolling. I have tried looking for a graphics card, maybe get a 40 series graphics card the same way, but I've not found one as of yet. Um, but I, I do know if you buy so many products or you're paying like monthly over a period for some products, it does take the option away to continuously go back in. So you, I think you can only have like up to four or five items before it takes it away and says, no, 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 you've got to pay these off first and then we'll give you the option to do it again you will notice when you search for things, you will not get the option. And then eventually, once you've paid off so many things, then you'll get the option to come back again. So it's really cool. Anyway, I don't know why I'm blabbing on about that, but I will link in the description below. There you go. If you want to know about Amazon, uh, there's an extra little uh, teaser or little extra tip there for you, or however you want to put it. So yeah, all in all, this, this router right here, it's actually been really, really good. I've uh, been enjoying it. It actually does a good job. Salute to Asus. Um, it's been really, really good. I've even tried it in VR. I can finally do VR again uh, because that's something I've put on the back burner due to not having a good wireless connection. Uh, I can now go back on to uh, doing some VR and showing you off the, the VR games and stuff. So definitely keep an eye out for that as well. because. Uh, that's one thing that's been blocking me at the moment, the VR stuff. Not being able to do it with uh, the one before, because the Zeke so before could only do 2.4 gigahertz. It couldn't do anything above that. And it's only 100 megabit as well. It was locked in 100 megabit. It wasn't a 1 gigabit um, router, modem, modem router, whatever you want to call it. And it's been a nightmare. So I had to use the NetDuma and the NetDuma's Wi Fi. Unfortunately, NetDuma 2 is not very good. Uh, so one thing that is a downside to that Duma R2 is the Wi-Fi. Guys, you need to update your Wi-Fi and give us better Wi-Fi for the routers in the future, maybe Wi-Fi 6 or whatever, or if you can upgrade it without having to do that, that'd be cool. But uh, yeah, the limitation or the range on the net Dumas is very, 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 very bad. So, so just unfortunate. It's just very, very weak for what it is and the connection just isn't good enough to obviously run uh, very good VR games, at least. Uh, or the, like the PC VR, I should say. The Quest 2 version's not too bad, but if you're doing PC VR, you're going to struggle with the NetDoom at R2. Uh, but this one, not a problem. Absolutely no problem at all. So there we go. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you hit the notification bell, Hit it again to make sure it is set to all. Because if you don't, it won't show up. And if I do any videos in the future, that won't pop up on there as well. So make sure you do that. Very, very simple and easy to do. Um, 
why don't I show you? So you just come over here. And then I just go over to one of my videos here. Um, can I do it without pressing on it? Or can I do it without pressing on it? But you basically just go into the video. If you click subscribe, there is an all button. And then you just, you just click on the notification again. It has all on it. And then you can obviously go in there. And obviously, yeah, it will then allow you to see all the videos I post out. Anything I post, any posts or videos, rather than it being kind of specific to that kind of content, you'll get all the content I ever put out on there. So make sure you check. Go to the notification bell, click on it, and it'll bring up like a pop up extra bit and just make sure it's set to all. Anyway, thank you very much. Appreciate you all. Salute to you. My elites thank you again for supporting the channel you can also support the channel by hitting the join button it's just 199 a month gives you access to emotes badges giveaways such as like steam codes and that and even bigger stuff in the in the future also i want to do some charity work for autism and dementia as well which would be really really cool so if you want to help support them please get involved it's just 199 a month and uh, thank you very much. Appreciate you. And thank you to you, BraphGT Spot, who continues to support and is a continued supporter and elite here on the channel. So, again, salute to you and salute to any of my elites who join. And thank you very much. And thank you also to you, my subscribers, who subscribe, help to obviously make the channel what it is, help to build the channel. We're getting very, very close now to 3,000 subscribers. We're getting ever closer. So if you want to obviously support and get us closer, please hit that subscribe button. And uh, yeah, it's been Kappa signing out. And as always, I salute you, my convicts, convicts, and salute to you, my elites. Keep staying elite, you beautiful people out there. And yes, I will see you in another video. Bye for now.